Hi, so have you seen the video about Hereditary Monarchy I made last week? If you haven't, I sure would recommend you watch it. It boosts the view count and you get to know more generally the background of this video, which is going to be about absolute monarchies, specifically the Gulf countries like Saudi Arabia, Qatar and the Emirates. Pretty much dystopian hellscapes made by the absolute monarch and their ally, pretending to uphold the values of Islam when it really only upholds none of them, almost. Apparently so bad in that, in fact, that even so-called Islam-critical people visit en masse, or otherwise praise. Countries in which climate change is bullshit, <coughs> human rights violations are rampant, and basically construction projects become dumb. <coughs> but beware, in this video I'm going to cite Adam something quite a number of times, because he's a genuinely great YouTube channel, who basically criticises dumb infrastructure and public transit projects which are especially rampant in the Gulf countries as they're trying to move their economy away from oil, how they initially grew, and start trying to become a tourist destination. So without any further ado, let's get started with this. Before humanity discovered the world beyond Africa, the Middle East was an important part of the trading route or Silk Roads between Europe and East Asia. In addition, their oceans also presented giant fishing opportunities. But that didn't make the Gulf countries, or at least the majority of them, rich. That was oil. The vast, 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 vast majority of oil reserves are within the Persian Gulf, territory of the Gulf countries. Therefore, they have practically absolute control over the oil prices and they jointly use that power in the Organisation of Petroleum Exporting Countries, or OPEC, for their own financial gains, and also so that they can uh, coerce other countries who trade with them, support them politically and militarily, or else there is a global oil crisis like what happened in 1973. We used to think that oil was an infinitely expendable resource until this crisis, and eventually it was discovered that the oil is a very scarce resource actually that could run empty within decades which causes the uh, Gulf countries to do basically a giant transition towards tourism and eco-friendly energy source. Another thing of note is that the uh, Gulf countries were the birthplace or at least a major uh, religious centre of Islam which is an Abrahamic religion very similar to the uh, Judaism and Christianity. The absolute dictatorships of, uh, for example, Arabia and the UAE are under control of Salafism, a very strict and very anti-human right interpretation of the Islam and the Quran. Specifically, most uh, Gulf countries have one prince, emir or other uh, absolute monarch like the Ayatollah who has basically complete control over the country including its religion oftentimes calling themselves led by the Sharia which is a very strict interpretation of the Quran the lead of Salafism now I'm not being anti-Islamic or even anti-Salafist here I'm only telling you that the countries which have Salafism as their state religion or at least are heavily inspired by Salafism and the uh, Sharia are under control of absolute monarchs who can do what they want to, as long as nothing. And that the Sharia has outright outdated backwards and anti-human rights regulations. For example, they have a lot of corporal punishments, which I'm not going to explain in uh, very vulgar detail. Beheadings, stone throwing and cutting off limbs are very common for things like they're rejecting the Islam, homosexuality, or indeed any kind of relationship before marriage. In addition, the rights of women and kids are outright even lower than they are here in Europe. For example, a uh, man is allowed to beat their women for anything the man doesn't like. Or women are basically not allowed to do anything without the consent of a male guardian. Of course, the word guardian being basically three quotations, that person being typically an Islam-oriented parent, or when they grow up, being their husband. They basically still uphold the traditional role models of 
male breadwinner, female caretaker of home and kids, that Christianity and Judaism also abide by, but have been rejected on a national level decades or centuries ago, depending on where you live in the world. And all this is possible because of the basically brute force that the husbands and also the uh, state through their absolute monarchy and religion are allowed to use. Would no one ever question a monarchy when they're basically being coerced to abide by it and punished when they oppose it? Right, makes me think of what could have happened. Now, speaking of which, an inherent trait of all dictators is that they want power over more and more power over everything. And they do that in all means possible, economically through the OPEC in this case, but also militarily. Saudi Arabia ha is currently invading Yemen, as does the United Arab Emirates, Sudan, Kuwait, and remember when uh, Iran tried to invade Kuwait, which led to the first Gulf War in which the United States of America was involved. Though to be fair, the US also had significant oil interests over there and vastly tried to invade uh, the Gulf again during the Second Gulf War after 9-11, citing concerns about terrorism and weapons of mass destruction. Another very infamous case of human rights violations by the uh, Gulf countries is the Kafala system, aka Slavery 2.0 Arab Edition. Basically, people are lured into countries like the UAE and Qatar for uh, work whilst they are promised very great salaries and good opportunities. In reality, when they arrive, their passport is taken away, they are placed into under-equipped and understaffed barracks uh, with very little food and maybe even no running water nearby, and they have to work extremely long hours with very little salary, if any at all. Basically, they're under full control of their employers. Uh, these are often domestic workers, city workers, or builders of big, 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 big buildings like the uh, stadium in uh, Qatar. Which brings us to another short little sidetrack, sports washing. You know, all those human rights violations and the climate change bullshit <coughs> that happens over there, it's all being covered up by things like sporting events. The uh, World Cup in 2022 was a great example of that, as are several races operated and managed by these countries. They all exist to hide the human rights strategies that the countries basically force onto their citizens and, more importantly, worker migrants. Except they don't, because otherwise I wouldn't be sitting here talking about them. Speaking of which, if I were an Arab in Saudi Arabia, for example, I would have been basically dead as soon as I uploaded this because that is the Sharira and the absolute monarchs trying to enforce their positions. Oh yeah, and another thing that this uh, is going to be talking about is the <coughs> fucking bull <coughs> infrastructure projects uh, that these <coughs> fucking countries try to build and uh, and then something is much better in talking about this, given that he's done that for years. But I do give the gist of some of them. Dubai, the glass city of doom that is trying to become a bicycle friendly place using air conditioned uh, greenhouse bike paths that basically just don't connect to anything. Hi, this is. Wow, it's. Uh, the Lying, which is part of Neon, which is a city built on steroids, basically a line shaped skyscraper that tries to house the entire city with a lot of problems in it. The Mukab, a cube that contains a couple of residential accommodations around a giant dome which contains shopping accommodations, which is also a giant screen with holograms in the town 1984 enough already. Uh, <laughs> and the uh, SAS city, a city trying to be sustainable while still having single family houses, American style suburbs, and uh, being built in the fing <laughs> desert. In fact, to quote Adam something about Dubai The city of Dubai is a 
fucking joke. It's a tasteless parody of everything wrong with modern humanity. That really told me how much Dubai was designed to attract ac expats who are going to live and work in the country. Expat apparently doesn't mean the same as worker migrant in Gulf countries. Uh, expats get a much superior treatment compared to uh, worker migrants from countries like India and Pakistan, particularly because they can afford it. But why do we even use the word expert in the first place, by the way? I'm make a short about that next uh, week or maybe even next Wednesday. But it also really shows how much this actually deters the real kind of tourist, the one that's interested in the history of a place and, you know, in finding beautiful places, for example, to take a photo of. Uh, for that, you would much rather have a article or traditional Arab style buildings, which they could have made for the petrodollars they had, but they decided not to do that, to instead show off wealth and modernity and therefore attract rich people mostly. This is also, however, a big, big warning for us all as per what could happen if an absolute wannabe dictator gets power in a place like America. Basically, the rich people get to live in glamorous hunks of glass and steel hidden in the city of the future with a lot of surveillance technology around them called smart city features. Meanwhile, the rest of us get to take only what is left by the rich people, which is a fraction of what was the fault just a couple decades ago. In fact, uh, I also got this quote from Adam something. But in any case, uh, this is still very much the ideal of conservative leaders. Pretty much a theocratic absolute monarchy with high levels of segregation and no rights ever for minorities like migrants and women. So we should be very wary of that when we are going to the next election, like the 2024 uh, US presidential election. In any case, I really hope that this uh, situation that's currently going on in the Middle East isn't going to come anywhere else, in the, especially the Western world. And that I can see you next time. Bye bye! I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you do, please give a thumbs up and share this video with all your friends and perhaps consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.